a contemporary painting by artist Ruth Major of the Massasoit Usamequin who met the pilgrims in 1621 and who was reburied at Burrs Hill Park in Warren, Rhode Island in 2017 is currently on display at the library. In the portrait of the Massasoit, we see the following as described by Pilgrim Edward Winslow in 1621 and published in London in Mort's Relation in 1622. A red horseman's coat given to him as a gift in the spring of 1621 by Edward Winslow and Stephen Hopkins on behalf of the Plymouth colonists. In his bosom hanging on a string a great long knife, a great chain of white bone beads around his neck, a copper jewel chain. His face was painted with a sad red-like murray, and is described in the letter by Emmanuel Altham in 1623, a black wolf skin he wears upon his shoulder, about the breadth of a span he wears beads about his middle. Now listen to the artist as she describes the painting of Solomon's, the Massasoit's village. On October 25th, 2020, my colleague Don Wittes, member of the Aquina Wampanoag tribe, and I met Suwam's Heritage Area Coordinator, Dr. Dave Wheat. We proceeded to Margaret's Rock, where we met Dr. Keith Morton, a Providence College professor with whom I correspond. We were honored to have Poconokets, Sagamore, Ho Waipi, Niampog, Tribal Sachem, Tracy Dancing Star Brown, Poconokit, historian Don Brown, and his brother Ryan Brown, book tribal videographer, all join us for the on-site study of the area. Keith described the natural fe features of the site in detail and agreed that the place was likely a site where Massasoit and his people set up a fall or winter campsite. The Poconokit leaders agreed. History tells us that the village sites was rotated for several good reasons, including the fact that indigenous, indigenous people did not wish to deplete the local materials needed for their homes and campfires. Photos and conversations coupled with months of research, followed by weeks of drawing, painting, and tribal and expert reviews of the painting, responses, and documentation have all resulted in the document and the finished image of Warren's oil painting. The historical painting depicts a visit to Massasoit Usmequin's Poconokit village in October by the Quebag Nipmuc Grand Sachem, or Great Sachem, not a white hunt, and his family, all kin of Usmequin's on his wife's side. Panese or warrior protectors and counselors from both tribes keep close watch over the leaders and their families. The Poconogat villagers will celebrate the arrival of their Massasoit's guests and be treated to many gifts of food they bring, which are always shared with the whole community. Poconogat warriors and punnies on the high rock ledge are keeping watch. Animal skins with tails are stretched to dry, smoke, and tan. In colder weather, women wear two skins sewn together, the fur side in for warmth. Men wear one as a cape. Both wear breech cloths, leggings with stirrups, and moccasins of moose skin, which is the warmest. Two mats for decorating the inside of the longhouse are in the process of being woven and dyed with sedges and reeds and hand-spun warps of materials like native hemp and milkweed. Smoke drifts from the longhouse through the smoke holes in the roof above the fire pits that are within. People carry woven bags and baskets filled with gifts of fresh berries, dried fish, nuts, and herbs. Three deer are brought in as gifts to Massasoit. 
their skins rolled up and carried in with the tails on. Men carry the rolled deer skins. Some people wear capes made of skins of animals with tails hanging down or of feathers made by the old men. A child brings a gift, gift of flowers. The far end of the village shows 12 to 14 long houses per 250 to 300 persons. I painted 14 long houses. The village has recently lost a great number of people due to illnesses that lasted from 1650 to 1619. Fires are burning in the Weetoos. A fire pit is used for the community drying of fish and roasting of meat or large fish. In an iron kettle obtained in trade, samp or corn porridge is spilled and simmered in the back smaller pit. Older boys tend the fire and women cook, prepare and serve food. Women grind green corn and dried corn in a hollowed out tree stump or a stone bowl. Customs, legends, religious beliefs and practices were based on thousands of years of teachings learned by oral tradition from elders and hands-on experiences living in natural surroundings in dense New England forests that often reach the sea. We hope you will visit the display of this painting at the library.